Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We are joined today by Terry Moulton. He is a member of the Wisconsin State Senate. He is now a co-chair, a founder of the Wisconsin Sportsman's Caucus. Congratulations, sir. One would have thought Wisconsin would have had one, but that's okay. You were part of the team that launched it in 2015. How did it happen? Yes, and I'm, I'm very excited about that. Uh, you're right. I, I don't know why we <laughs> right, hadn't been right. part of this caucus in the past. But it's national, uh, by the way. It's national. Right. We are now the 45th state who have joined the National Sportsman's Caucus, and uh, I'm excited about it. We're, we're going, we're, it's a bipartisan effort. Right, and uh, let's talk about that, because that could be the most inspiring part of the caucus. I was speaking with a member of the state Senate, a Democrat, and she was just as effusive about the caucus as you, who happen to be a member of the Republican Party. Yes, and, and that's a great thing about it. You know, we are, we're, we're people who care about outdoor right. recreation and hunting and fishing and uh, we can get together and talk about things we agree on. And I want to talk about outdoor recreation. You know, when I was a kid, when you were a kid, the outdoors was so much part of our existence. Even if we lived in ur urban or suburban areas. But now look, I have two daughters, 13 and 11. All they're on is their iPhones <laughs> and it's, it's frustrating. I want to say, get out of the house, put your phone down and enjoy the outdoors. How can you, as a member of the Sportsman <laughs> Caucus, you know, convince our kids, our grandkids, that the outdoors has so much to offer? Well, I, I know exactly what you're, <laughs> right. what you're talking about because I've got grandkids so who are right. you know right here all oh. the time. Right. Uh, but I think I think that one of the keys is being is getting those kids out. Right. Getting them out. I, I every one of my grandkids is an archer. It, it nice. Has, it's gotten into. Uh, hunting and, and fishing. I've taken my grandkids fishing. Yeah, tell uh, us about so that. So we, we get them out there. I, I want to <coughs> hear, I really like, in the depth of your core, and I don't mean to get too, you know, woo woo on you <laughs> if you know what I'm saying, but what's it like for, you know, Grandpa Moulton to sit there with his grandkids and, you know, enjoy the outdoors, hunting, fishing, hiking, whatever you're, whatever you're doing. Well, it, it's really exciting, and, yeah. and you know, I, I, I developed a love for fishing because my dad took me as a small kid on right. some western Montana trout oh, streams. Wow. And you know, when you're out there in the woods and there's no phones, there's right. nobody else around, uh, you can just bond with, with your grandkids, with your kids, and uh, it, it's, it's just, there's nothing it's, like you it. can't describe it, really. And what's nice about your advocacy of the sportsman's world is not only are you advocating as a member of the legislature, but you also are a small businessman. And you own two businesses that focus on the great outdoors. Tell us about those businesses. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. I took two childhood passions, okay. archery and fishing, and turned them into two businesses. I have an archery pro shop and, and fishing tackle retail business. And then we have a fishing tackle manufacturing business. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's directed primarily f towards musky uh, lures, mm -hmm. but we also make some lures that are sold in the in the bass market. 1978, I was blessed to introduce a lure in the market called the hog wobbler. Oh my! It took off. It became a musky classic. Oh, you're kidding! I've sold them all over the world. Who would have uh, thunk? Yeah, so right. It's it's been a labor of love, really. So one of the first issues that was brought to the fore by the Sportsman's Caucus is the question of clothing for deer hunting. Who would have thunk that somehow the color of clothing for deer hunting <laughs> would get so much play in press? But currently, we see deer hunters wearing blaze orange, and it's really for their protection. But uh, there have been some discussions about opening the color spectrum to blaze pink. Um, I was speaking with a member uh, recently who had gone and looked at a spectrometer and saw that pink actually is pretty effective in terms of visual eyesight. Well, at the same time, the deer can't see the pink. And so talk to us about this blaze orange, blaze pink controversy, <laughs> <laughs> if there is one. Well, I don't uh, really understand why there'd be a controversy. Mm -hmm. You know, we're losing hunters in Wisconsin over the last several years. Mm -hmm. And w right now, uh, three out of, or three to one new hunters are women versus men. Fascinating, right. And in my business, I see women coming in buying pink bows, right. buying pink releases, having fletching put on their arrows that it's pink. So this is kind of about recruitment. Right. And, and we're not mandating that anyone <laughs> right. has to right. wear fluorescent pink. Yeah, okay. We're just providing as another option. Right. Uh, to, uh, and it's, we had a researcher look into this right. and, and 
Fluorescent pink, blaze pink is just as visible, if not more visible than fluorescent orange. And so as we speak today, are we going to see that legislation march through the legislature? I mean, anything well, could happen. Anything can happen right. with legislation, but we're hopeful. I, I just don't know what the opposition may end up being. I was concerned initially about safety, right. but the research has proven it's, it's very visible. So uh, we'll see what happens. Here's another interesting issue that one would not expect to have to come to the fore, but it did. So apparently, um, when an organization wants to donate uh, certain types of game. Uh, in Wisconsin, the law had been they could only donate venison. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, where do these laws come from and how did this happen? <laughs> but, you know, so you looked into this. Talk to us about the background of this law and what you're doing to try to clean up this legislation. Well, since 2000, uh -huh. yes, we've been able, the sports men and women across Wisconsin have been able to donate venison, deer, right. to uh, the county, the local counties, and then they get it processed and it's given to charities and food pant sure. pantries around the state. Good thing. 80,000 deer in the right. last few years have been donated. Sure, and, and let me tell you, deer, a lot of meat. I'm, oh, I've learned that. A lot of meat on deer. Three million yeah. pounds of venison right. have gone to, to right. food pantries. So we thought in Wisconsin, uh, last year alone, I think we harvested 33,000 turkeys. Right. So why not be able to allow sportsmen and women to donate turkeys to the this food pantry? This is America. So it's just How do we not sense. allow the donation <laughs> of turkeys? Yeah. I mean... Do you know the history of how it wound up? It was limited to venison? Was there like the venison organization? I, I think maybe it had to do, you know, we weren't always that well known for harvesting turkey. I see, I see. And since they've been uh, introduced into Wisconsin, they've grown and multiplied across the state. So now there is a, a vast uh, number of people that hunt turkey. And so has this legislation passed? Are we done with, with the turkey venison debate? The, I, we haven't. We're getting there. It's we're, okay. We're well, whatever. It's all good. It's all good. Getting, but it looks as if we're going to march down that <laughs> yeah, path and yeah. kind of open uh, the floodgates. <laughs> I do want to ask you about an interesting uh, element that was presented by Governor Walker. And here's another example of how when you deal with uh, outdoorsmen, there's no partisan l divisions. Governor Walker had uh, talked about eliminating the Department of Natural Resources. Boy, that didn't go over very well <laughs> with Democrats and Republicans in Wisconsin. Talk to me about that and why that was kind of a unifying force for the Sportsman's Caucus. Well, his proposal was to take away some of the uh, authority of right. the DNR board. Right, right. Well, and better and, and we, f we felt that that really wasn't uh, something that we wanted to do. You know, that we felt there needs to be that transparency or that check and balance in the system right. between the Department of Natural Resources, the DNR board, and the governor's office. So uh, there was a lot of uh, pushback on that Clearly. proposal. Yeah. So talk to me about your view of how this caucus will help to breed uh, camaraderie, collegiality, because it does, f I mean, literally when I was talking to was Senator Janet Buley, a Democrat, I mean, her eyes lit up, and it was as if, you know, like the sun and, sh and the, you know, the clouds had opened. I mean, there is something about this that really brings Democrats and Republicans together. Well, I think anytime you talk to a sportsman who's into fishing and hunting, you uh -huh. know, uh, they're all alike, whether, regardless of what right. side of the political aisle you're right. on, uh, if you have a love for fishing and hunting, right. you can bond with somebody else that has similar love. But lives. I'm wondering if this can, can help to breed more, I mean, look, you're all friends in the end, but still continue to breed that collegiality, that camaraderie that folks believe is not in government. Yeah. Whether it is or not is another story. But I, I think some of the events that we could possibly have right. would go a long ways towards, right. towards overcoming some of these uh, uh, you know, polarization. Right. Exactly. Uh, get together with a few guys in the boat. Uh, out on a uh, on an outdoor excursion or maybe something. Maybe they'll wear blaze pink. Yeah, maybe we, maybe we can all wear blaze pink. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, His name is Terry Moulton. He is a member of the of the Wisconsin State Senate. He is the new chair of the Sportsman's Caucus. My name is Brad Pomerantz. It's Charlotte.